Terms like terrorism, extremism, countering violent extremism, preventing violent extremism have been harshly criticized for disproportionately focusing on Muslim minorities and for being ideologically loaded. Recently, some scholars and practitioners have been adopting the term hateful extremism. What is exactly hateful extremism? Hateful extremism is an old idea, but it's a fairly new formulation. Uh, the Commission for Countering Extremism in England and Wales, just this month of October 2019, uh, published a report with a new working definition uh, to, to replace a previous definition of hateful extremism. Uh, David Cameron, the former UK Prime Minister, back in 2015, addressing a UN assembly on countering violent extremism, suggested there was a need to deal with extremism before it becomes violent. Makes perfect sense. But he completely failed to outline where that point was. Uh, it's generally agreed that the problem with violent extremism is violence, and uh, we, we're not opposed to radical or extreme ideas per se. And yet, uh, of course, then Prime Minister Cameron's idea of dealing with uh, extremism before it becomes violent still makes sense, but it can't just be on the basis of ideas that we don't like, or we find too strong, too weird, uh, uh, irrational from our perspective. But the best way of uh, drawing a line in the sand, in fact the only way we can realistically do this, is uh, around the concept of hate speech and incitement of hatred. So in this report which came out on October 7, 2019, the Commission for Countering Extremism in England and Wales uh, came out with a really nicely thought out definition for what they're calling hateful extremism. And they say hateful extremism uh, is behaviours that can incite and amplify hate or engage in persistent hatred or equivocate about and make the moral case for violence and that draw on hateful, hostile or supremacist beliefs directed at an outgroup who are perceived as a threat to the well-being, survival or success of an in-group and, and that cause or are likely to cause harm to individuals, communities or wider society. So it's behaviours that incite or amplify hatred, uh, that draw on hostile um, and supremacist views towards outgroups, and that are likely to cause a harm to individuals, communities or wider society. So a nice broad definition. It doesn't talk about democracy or British government, which was the shortfall of the previous definition. And of course, this isn't uh, uniquely fitted to far-right extremism in a Western context. It certainly addresses the sort of hatred we see with uh, white supremacist extremism, but it equally fits in the context of India or, or, or Myanmar, or indeed anywhere else around the world. So it strikes me as a useful addition to thinking about how we counter violent extremism, and, and we start to talk now about countering hateful and violent extremism. A lot of this hateful extremism won't ever manifest as violence, but it is a problem in itself, and it's legitimate for a nation state, for a government, to be concerned about intervening when there's this kind of in incitement of hatred uh, or something that's causing harm to, a, to an outgroup, that's a problem in itself. And as we learnt with the uh, awful terrorist attack in Christchurch in March 2019 and then the uh, terror attacks in uh, Sri Lanka in April 2019, uh, people who were known as hateful extremists can overnight become very lethal, violent extremists. And that should be a reminder for us to take uh, hateful extremism seriously whether it leads to violent extremism or whether it just leads to uh, an undermining of respect, resilience, cohesion in society. So should we replace the terminology associated with violent extremism, including terms like CVE, countering violent extremism, and PVE, preventing violent extremism, and replace them with hateful extremism? Look, I think there's still a, a, a use for speaking about violent extremism. Clearly violence is a problem. Uh, and uh, the, it goes back to that sort of general agreed definition about terrorism that uh, you know, people might say one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. But the problem with terrorism is it's, it's a method that uses violence. It says the ends justify the means. Uh, and as we've learnt through the course of the 20th and 21st century, you can have very good causes that end up using these very bad means. And that is the, the very definitional idea of terrorism and, and by extension violent extremism. The term countering violent extremism is useful and I think it remains useful because it addresses the problem of violent extremism upstream before it occurs and downstream with rehabilitation, but it carries baggage. Any term that we come upon in this space carries baggage. Social cohesion has the idea of sort of top-down uh, control, it, it has echoes of integration and assimilation, so there's problems there.
any term we think of has problems. Uh, so I think we have to use multiple terms with care. I think adding to violent extremism the notion of hateful extremism and, and talking about hateful and violent extremism, which can be two different things but are often linked, is a, is a better way of framing things. So in the context of Australia, for example, rather than just saying that we're concerned about Muslim communities because they are vulnerable to having young people recruited, radicalised, uh, and they're at risk, uh, we should be engaging with Muslim communities along with many other communities uh, because they suffer from the effects of hateful extremism and that, that focus on hateful extremism gives us a broader set of concerns. Of course most of the victims of, of Islamist violent extremism uh, are Muslims uh, so in engaging with a community that's being targeted by recruiters we are even with this narrow definition of violent extremism and terrorism concerned with uh, people suffering but to put it more broadly in terms of hateful extremism to counter Islamophobia and prejudice, bigotry, racism, uh, puts it on a ground that is, is more in keeping with people's day-to-day -day concerns, meets at a level of, of common respect and, and, and common concern, and addresses a problem that's endemic, that that's people experience all the time. And, and therefore, uh, there's a, a common interest for engaging with this issue. Uh, and, and whether or not we end up preventing violence, and we, we certainly believe that there's reason for doing this work because it does lead to the prevention of violence, we don't have to get hung up on how we count or measure this. We can say that if we're building more respectful, resilient communities and societies, that is an end in itself and it's worth doing. And I think that's really the only sensible way we can go forward, particularly when we're ever conscious of the need to uh, evaluate and to measure. It makes perfect sense. Funders want to have some evaluation mechanism. We can measure whether we're making communities and societies more resilient, more respectful. It's much harder to measure the counterfactual of whether we've prevented a violent attack. Do you think that hateful extremism captures all forms of hate, including hate against groups that are not traditionally the target of political or religious ideologies? I think one of the strengths of the concept of hateful extremism is it uh, is agnostic as towards ideologies, outgroups and in-groups. And the outgroup, in-group, the us-then thing applies across the spectrum. So it applies within one religious community to somebody whose views are regarded as deviant or because of their relationship status, their sexual orientation, uh, their um, physical appearance or capacity is regarded as somehow an outgroup. So I think it's a very useful and very powerful concept. And of course, history has shown us that uh, this us-them, in-group, out-group definition uh, to people well outside the context might seem uh, a, a very sort of minor point of distinction, but people within the context, it becomes everything. So in the context of the, the Irish Troubles, for example, whether you were Catholic, Irish, or um, uh, Protestant, English, was terribly important, but somebody coming from Japan would look at the community and not see the difference. Um, and that example can be applied across many different cases. Uh, unfortunately, within uh, communities of faith, Often minor points of what seem to be minor points of doctrine can become the basis for uh, great antagonism. And similarly, there's a human tendency that we're seeing uh, very acutely at the moment to obsess about other people's sexuality and their relationships and to make that a point of, uh, of demonizing them and, and, and making them an outgroup. Uh, and unfortunately, people of disability uh, and people of any sort of uh, observable difference have long suffered persecution and, and, and been ostracised. And that is not just physical disability. Uh, if somebody is regarded as, as not neurotypical and that uh, in, in not being neurotypical they may uh, engage in uh, social interactions differently than somebody who is neurotypical, uh, that generally stigmatises them and, and um, uh, makes them vulnerable to uh, being picked upon and, 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 and bullied and harassed. So we, we need sort of this broad concept to unpack every kind of distinction and difference. And of course, uh, one of the challenges we face in this field is that we all have biases and prejudices. And when we're working with a community that suffered from say bigotry or racism or Islamophobia or, or some other kind of uh, prejudice and, and experienced hateful uh, extremism themselves, they may uh, struggle to recognise where they themselves are perpetuating some of the same dynamics towards um, people from within their community who are in some way different. Uh, so it's a, it's a challenge for all of us. It's, it's a very human response. It it's certainly deals with white supremacy and uh, 
a very typical problem of uh, middle class, middle aged white men uh, often being um, privileged and, and being part of a problem, but it actually applies in every different uh, cultural context, in every different uh, geographical location. That makes it very powerful.